Everybody. These lions are basically stalking us now. The mother watching carefully. I am speaking very quietly. You can only see two of them. There are all three of them there. They're looking at Vian. They came walking up to us. They're now less than three feet from the vehicle. I can't even see. I can only see them through the camera lens. They are so close to us. I cannot see them through the over the passenger door. She seems to be very relaxed about the situation. But I don't want to incur her wrath at this stage, obviously. But they've taken upon taken upon taken it upon themselves to come this close to us. And we can see oh this is just amazing. It's unbelievable. They're bigger than house cats now. You can see that very clearly now. And what I would like you to take note of is that I said the other day, somebody asked why don't they approach vehicles like hyena cubs? I said, well, I don't really know. Leopard cubs don't because leopard adults don't and leopards aren't as confident. But these chaps have done precisely what I said I didn't know if they would. And they're right close to us now. They've approached us, stalked us. The little, other little one is now out in front. They've lost interest slightly. The mother is watching us very carefully. So I'm speaking quietly. And Viam is making very slow moves on the back with the camera. Nothing sudden about anything we're doing here. We must never forget that things can go, or situations can change extremely fast out here as soon as you start to get complacent about any of this stuff. Greg, what a lovely question from you while we talk very quietly in this situation. You say, are the vehicles likely to be perceived as another grazing animal by these cats um, or, or as opposed to a sort of bipedal threat? I think one half of that is correct. They don't see us as a bipedal threat, that is clear, because they wouldn't let us get anywhere near as close as this if they were on foot and they wouldn't approach us if we were on foot. That said, this car doesn't smell like a grazer, it doesn't eat, it comes and, and sits next to them. A grazer, they would be, you know, a big grazer like a rhino or an elephant they would move away from. A small grazer they would eat if it came this close to them. So it's somewhere in between. They don't see us as a threat, they don't see us as something to eat and it's quite an interesting situation that I'm not sure anyone has very clearly understood and what's very interesting is at least so let's just try and sex them while they're sitting out there like that one male one female there those two now it's just the other one we don't know Greg what happens or as a friend of mine said to me once he said a lion can spot a monkey's ear behind a tree at a hundred meters how on earth can we think that they don't recognize what we are sitting on the back of these cars and I think that's a very good point it's just the fact that they don't perceive us in the same way. They just don't perceive us as a threat. And that is because I think we're not standing up. It's also because our human scent is to some extent masked by the brake fluid and the transmission fluid and the steering fluid and the engine oil and the gas or petroleum that we're burning in the car. Uh, so I think to some extent that's one of the reasons they don't um, perceive us in the same way. Right, that's a little lioness there, who's got the... Oh, no, that's the little lioness there. Hello, Cluster Charge, you're a new viewer. And you say, what do we call these cubs when they're older? Um, I'm not really sure how to answer your question. I think maybe you're asking um, what we call them, uh, yearlings, juveniles, maybe, when they're not cubs. 
Uh, in terms of a name, they probably won't get names because they're part of the pride. Okay, there we can see very clearly two lionesses. Two lionesses, everybody, one male. So we've got one male and two lionesses. That's quite interesting. Very, very sweet.